Good morning and happy Sunday, everybody. It's so good to see you here this morning. And I see lots of people still coming in. And if you would like to stand up with me, we are just going to begin by welcoming the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit here. So Father, today we just gather all of ourselves and we just come right into your presence. And we say this morning, we honor you and we worship you. And it is our best pleasure to be here with you today to to actually make a statement not only to ourselves but to the whole world that we believe in you we believe that you are alive and that you are well we believe that you sent jesus to to um, be the ultimate sacrifice for us so that we could live fully with you today here on earth and in heaven for eternity and so we turn our eyes and our gaze and our hearts and our love toward you this morning. And we worship you. And would you just come, Holy Spirit? Would you fill up this place? Would you go deep? Would you go wide? Would you, would you be speaking to us? Would you be, would you be shifting things? Would you be healing? We just say yes to every single thing that you want to do today to give glory to the Father. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Lay on and 
And you just feel that like blanket of his presence and his peace and his joy just laying over us as we stand under the reality of his holiness. His holiness that just is abundant and is and is given to us to to be close to but also to be involved in and connected in we we get to be holy because he's holy and father we just we just stand in that holiness for a moment just feeling you feeling that connection to you feeling that that worship just rise up and up up and out of us Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of hosts. His love endures forever. To him alone who does great wonders. And I, I just want you to think for a moment as we're as we're as we stand in this time and this place I want you to think about the great wonders that he has done for you or done for someone that you know and it, we just got a testimony from the school ministry one of them out on outreach and they said that they actually felt prompted one of the leaders felt prompted to wear Steve Long's healing t-shirt and they said they didn't really want to wear it but the Holy Spirit kept nudging them wear it wear it and when they wore it they were out on the streets and somebody said to them Oh, I need that, what you're wearing on your shirt. And immediately she said she felt the Holy Spirit and knew, okay, I'm in such a time as this. And and um, and the person said that they have um, cancer in their foot. And in two days they were going for a surgery where the doctor said, we're probably going to have to amputate your foot. And so they prayed and prayed. And they got a message a few uh, later on in the week saying, went to no foot amputation and they were just waiting to hear the results of cancer free so so as we just stand here for a moment in this verse what are the wonders that God has done for you just taking that moment what are the wonders that he's done for you his love endures forever who by his understanding made the heavens his love endures forever. Who spreads out on the earth upon the water? His love endures forever. Who made the great lights? His love endures forever. The sun to govern the day? His love endures forever. The moon and stars to govern the night? His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven whose love endures forever. And we give thanks. We give all of it. The best that we know how, we give it and we give it and we give it. And during worship, we were singing that song that just says, you save my life. And I think most of us in here can be like, yes, you literally saved my life. If you guys had known me when I was in my early 20s, you probably would have been very disappointed. You would have said, that girl is going nowhere. She's off track. And what happened is the Holy Spirit pursued me. Even before I was pursuing Him, the Holy Spirit was finding me and pursuing me and loving me and calling me. And I literally got saved by Him. I got saved. And if you're in this room, and I, I, I really felt this morning actually to kind of, um, I forget, I don't know what the word is, but to not assume if somebody on the outside looks great and is doing well, that they are. I had, a, I had a great life. I had every opportunity in life to do well and be successful. But on the inside, I was on a path of destruction that then showed itself on the outside. So don't assume that someone just has to look down and out and broken because all of us are down and out and broken without having Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And if you're in this room and you've not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to assume 
there's something in you that brought you here, that you're either curious or you're hungry for something more, or you know that you have a hole inside of yourself that cannot be filled by the world. It can't be filled by money. It can't be filled by, you know, doing everything perfectly. It can't be filled by just trying to be hopeful all the time. We need Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And the beauty is, as He said to you and me, I will trade my life for you. I will give up my life for you as a love offering just to show you how important you are to me. And I'll trade it and I will take all your garbage and I will restore every single thing and more. And so if you're in this room and you haven't accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to just wave at me wildly. If you know, oh, my heart's beating, I'm kind of scared to do this, I don't know all these people here, it doesn't matter. Just throw your hand up to me and we have a team of people here who are ready to just circle around you and be your support and pray with you and walk you through what you need to do. Do you need to be perfect to do this? Absolutely not. What you need is to recognize that you have a need that can't be fulfilled any other way. So all over, just stick up your hand to me. If you brought someone with you, just nudge them and be like, I'll go with you. I'm going to ask you guys to come up to the front here very bravely. Very bravely, but bring your friends, bring your people. Come, do not let this moment go by where you just say, it's a bit too scary, so I'm going to let the moment go by. If you're online, same thing for you. Don't let the moment go by. Are we seeing some clapping here? Come on, come on. I bet there's at least 10 people in here who are like, I need to be brave. So we are celebrating with you. This is just absolutely beautiful. Scoop them around, tuck them in. Guys, you know, does it not remind you of when you gave your life to Jesus? I just feel that, that excitement, that joy, and this is a brand new day, brand new day. You know, I, I had a dream last night. <laughs> And the, in the dream, I was standing at the, those doors right by the coffee shop there, and I looked out, and there was a, what I'm gonna call a flash flood going from here to right through to the School of Ministry. And I could see, I could see there were some people that were sort of on the upward part of the parking lot that, that were looking at what, happening, what was happening, and I could see people walking through that flash flood and the water was like right up to the to, to you know the the top of their neck and normally a flash flood would be scary this was not scary at all and i remember looking out and thinking oh my goodness you can still walk through it and keep your keep where you're going but to this this church had a word several years ago that the, that when there was a flash flooding a flooding of toronto that revival was coming and you know we had a flash flood and when that happened we were all like revival's coming revival's coming guys these are the seeds of revival is coming and i believe that dream i believe a few things i think there's a very strong connection between this church and the school of ministry and what happens here goes there and what happens there goes here i believe the presence of the father son and holy spirit is coming to inundate us with a with a uh, of with a strength and a and an outpouring that does not knock us over but but um but we're able to walk and carry in it i also felt the lord saying um you know it's in a it's in a parking lot where that flash flood was going through and typically 
cars are part of ministries. And so I felt anyone in this room who is either leading a ministry or is part of a ministry to stand up. And I'm going to pray that that anointing and that flooding and that overwhelming. So that could be you're in ministry. That could be that you're in the workplace and you have a leadership position and you're and you're carrying things in your workplace. It could mean that you're part of the outreach team. It could mean you lead a connect group. It could mean you're part of the greeting team. Now, I know there's a lot of you in here who are carrying some kind of responsibility to to gather to push the kingdom out further and so i just pray for every single person who is standing up in this room a that the floodgates would be open they would just tear through any rubble anything that needs to be you know washed away i pray for that you are standing up in your stature in a in a stronger and and higher way so that you can have vision and see what you're doing with the lord and where he's going and I pray I just pray the floodgates open of his presence of his love of his anointing I pray father that there is a an anointing from this place for evangelism father I pray that those those that flash flood floats in people who are for you who are looking for you and finding you Father, I pray that there is so much joy in the river as we go and we minister and we just roll on out with you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. So may those be first fruits. I am looking for God to do more and just can't wait to see how he's doing it and where he's doing it. So we As part of worship, we just want to um, remind you that there is an opportunity to give an offering. The um, options are going to be up on the um, slides here. It is so easy to give, guys, through PushPay. You can pull your phone out, download the app. It's the easiest thing that you can do. You can do it out of your debit card, out of your credit card. And there's nothing like a good reminder for us that that there is something bigger than ourselves. Right? Sometimes we get a bit tunnel vision and we forget, but I think part of giving an offering to the Lord is just his reminder, there is something bigger than us. And so it is with great joy that I give and you have the opportunity to give. We also wanted to give a big welcome to our leader school people. So in case you're not familiar, we have a five-month school. Those students are out on outreach right now. So we have one in um, Seoul, Korea. That's where uh, Sarah Smith is. We have one in uh, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. And we have another one in Costa Rica. They are on fire. They are having the best time and um, out there doing lots of fun things. We also have the leader school. So leader school, stand up. Let's see where you are. Some of them were at the earlier service, but we have a fantastic group of leader school. Please pray for them this week as they uh, enter into uh, Healing Life's Hurt. So they're going to have their hearts, you know, um, poked at and prodded at and uh, they're going to have an amazing time. So leader school, guys, it's wonderful to have you here. Welcome into the family. And not last but least, Murray Smith. So we can now call him half of the senior uh, leader of this church, which is very exciting. Thank you to all you guys who came out and celebrated Steve and Sandra last week. It was very sweet, very beautiful, and who also celebrated Mary Nash. That was an awesome Sunday, and we're excited to, to run with you. So if you will just uh, stretch your hands to Murray, let's just pray for him. So Father, thank you so much for today, and thank you for um, this message of, of living in your glory and hosting your glory and getting more revelation about your glory has been a deep message that you've put inside of Murray. And Father, I pray today that he just has utmost joy as he, as he pours out what you have poured into him. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Have fun. Thank you, Kathy. Good afternoon, everybody. Good to see you all. Um, 
Ash and I just want to, before we, I get going, I just want to say a huge thank you uh, and my thanks to Kathy's for your love and support last weekend. Just we really were overwhelmed and so blessed with um, just your outpouring of love to us. So thank you. It is a great joy and a great privilege to be here. And um, yeah, you're a great, great church family. And we appreciate you a lot. So we're in this year of God calling us to come up higher, to come up here, to experience more of God. And at the, beginning, at the end of last year, Ash really had this sense from the Holy Spirit that we were to stop and pray. That's one of our values that we have as a church, that we operate particularly as a staff. One of them is to stop and pray. But the Holy Spirit really spoke to Ash and, uh, and just said, stop and pray. Do you have... Do I have your full attention? Do I have your full attention? And we were, you know, so that we just sort of began to think about that and felt like the Holy Spirit was actually leading us into some prayer. And I know, it, you know, it's, it's something that a number of churches do at the start of the year, but for us, we just felt like we wanted to do a week of prayer and, um, and take some time to stop and to pray and to just experience God. And so over this next three weeks, we're going to be talking about prayer um, it's, you know, the title is Teach Us to Pray, but really we're looking to Jesus to teach us to pray. And, um, and what we're going to do on the 30th of January, which is a Monday, through to February the 5th, which is a Sunday, we're going to focus on prayer that week. So we're going to take uh, probably through social media just some themes for every day for us to pray into. And then we're going to be gathering, uh, those of us that can, uh, at 7 p.m. Monday to Friday here in this auditorium um, and just to pray and seek God and to, and to you know, call on him to release his kingdom. We're going to have some worship and prayer. If you, if you can't make it, we will be live streaming it. We'll be putting it up for about 24 hours until the next prayer meeting on the live stream. So you can join us um, you know, remotely or later. You can also you know, maybe gather together as your connect group and watch it and join in online with us if you wanted to, if it's hard to come into this building. But we wanted to just to let you know, Friday night will be a little longer. Typically, Monday to Thursday will be about an hour, but then Friday will be a bit longer. Saturday will be something to watch online only. And then Sunday, we're going to gather and we're going to do some prayer actually together in the service. So um, that is, that's exciting for us. We just feel like it's a stirring of the Lord, you know, for Kathy's word, that, she, that dream that she had last night. One of the keys for us is, is, is prayer. Our friend Mark DuPont, he says this, prophecy is an invitation to dive into the pool of prayer. So when we get a dream like that, we actually want to pray into it and believe God for it. And I know there are many people here that already are praying and interceding for us and, and as a church, and we appreciate that, but we wanted to do it together as a family as well. Consider fasting something if you want to. Consider fasting negativity or food of some description, sugar, or uh, Netflix, or social media, whatever it might be. There's nothing, uh, nothing magical about fasting other than just to say, Lord, we're serious about wanting to press into you. So I'm preaching this week from the Lord's Prayer, the kingdom, preaching about kingdom prayer. Ash will be preaching next week. Uh, I think her topic will be, how big is your ask? I have to say that carefully. And... Uh, <laughs> And then the week after, I think Mel will be preaching on just faith and perseverance in prayer. So, really good. I'm going to preach today, as I said, the kingdom prayer of Jesus. So, we sometimes refer to it as the Lord's Prayer. You could also refer to it as the Disciples' Prayer. It actually comes twice in the Scriptures. The first one, the one we're going to read from, is from Matthew chapter 6. It also appears in Luke chapter 11. The Luke chapter 11 is, is much shorter uh, we're going to take the longer version in Matthew chapter 6. And so we're going to read from verse 7 through to verse 13. So Matthew 6, 7 to 13, I think it will be up on the screen uh, as well. And um, you know, Jesus is pray, he's this, in the middle of this little conversation, which we know as the Sermon on the Mount, and he's really talking about how not to be religious and how not to show off before God and before other people. So this isn't about doing things uh, better. Anyway, verse 7 of Matthew 6. When you pray, not if you pray, when you pray, 
Do not heap up empty phrases or babble, as uh, some translations would say. Do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do. The Gentiles in this context are just people that don't believe God and don't know God. So don't heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask Him. Pray then like this, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So this is Jesus' kingdom prayer. And I think, think the first thing that's just worth pointing out as we look at the overall structure before we dive into the detail is the first thing I'd like us to notice is the communal dimension to it. It's not my father. It's not my sins. It's not my daily bread. It's not deliver me from evil. It's, it's a, very much a we language. Our father. Uh, deliver, deliver us. Give us food. Um, forgive us. And so I just love that dimension of when we pray this prayer, even if we pray it individually, we're praying it on behalf of the church family, the community of God. Because God doesn't just invite us into an individual relationship with him, although that is super important, but he also invites us into a family where we get to pray and be and live together. So it's us. It's a communal dimension. I think the other thing I want to say before we get into it is, you know, probably many of us could recite this off by heart. Yeah, when I was reading through the scripture, you maybe didn't use all the same words, but you would be able to recite it all off by heart. There's actually a little bit at the end um, that we didn't, it's not actually in the scriptures, but has been sort of added in the early first century that was also go something like, you know, for yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's very, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful prayer, obviously, Jesus prayed it, probably prayed it many times, some sort of form of that, because it was so important that it's now become handed down to each one of us, you know, and we all know over the last 2,000 years this prayer has been prayed in whatever language that people have spoken in, because it's been something that has come to us. But as we look, so when we pray and when we read it, it's important that we don't just sort of jump over and thinking, yeah, I know all about this. And I started, I've got to confess, I started preaching, when I started preparing this message, I thought, yeah, Lord's Prayer, it's a nice thing to pray, let's give us a good structure. But actually what I found as I was beginning to study, it was the Holy Spirit was gripping my heart at a new level for the kingdom of God, and that's my, that's my prayer for, for you and for us as a family. You know, so um, the thing that is, you know, the other, by way of introduction, some other things to, to note, this Prayer really is a boiled down version of everything that Jesus stands for. It's a boiled down version of Jesus' mission himself. So what did he come to do? Well, he came to reveal to us the Father. He came to show us how good the Father is. And so he says, our Father in heaven. He came to reveal the glory of God. So he says, hallowed be your name. He came to bring the kingdom of God and establish the kingdom, which is, we'll, you know, we'll dive into what that means in a minute. But he came to reveal and establish the kingdom. He himself is the king in the kingdom. So he said, pray, kingdom of God come, will of God be done on earth as it is in heaven. He came to reconcile heaven to earth. That's part of his mission. He also came to feed the hungry. So he feeds 5,000, he feeds 4,000, he gives food and other things to people. He came to forgive sins. He came to release us from the devil, from the work of the enemy. And so this prayer is a boiled down version of everything that Jesus is about and his mission upon the earth. And so as we're praying this prayer, as we're live, looking into it and, and praying it, what we're actually agreeing with is Jesus' mission and his mandate to be fulfilled upon the earth even today. And I, I really, I, I, I love that idea. And so um, it's, you know, it's his agenda that he's very succinctly put into, into words. And, and if we look at the overall structure, you can see really probably three parts. The first part is, hey, everybody, don't forget who God is. Our prayer is anchored into the reality that he is Father. So that'll be my first point. The second point, the, the overarching theme is that he says, seek first the kingdom of God. 
Don't just get involved in your own things, but first of all, look up, see the Father, and then be about the Father's business. The third dimension of the prayer, the second half of it, is really um, we need things to live within the kingdom. We need life in the kingdom. So, Lord, give us all that we need to live in this wonderful kingdom of yours. I don't know about you, but I often can pray this prayer backwards. That's like, help, help, help. Disaster striking, I need your help. I need, I need my, maybe I've got some financial issues or I've, I, I'm running into some difficulties in relationships or you know, I'm finding difficult to forgive. So help, help, help. And as I sort of pray into that, I think, oh yeah, but you, you know, that would be really good if your kingdom is good. So maybe we could have your kingdom to help me. And, and then I remember that, oh, the, your kingdom is a good king. You're a good king. You're a king of love. So, oh, you're a good father. And we kind of maybe pray it backwards. Whereas actually what Jesus is saying is focus on the Father first. So let's look at that, the first point. The first point that he prays is this. He says in this, well, sorry, let me back up. I've jumped ahead of myself a little bit. The other thing I want to say before diving into the detail is that theologians over the years, over the 2,000 years, have just sort of been in discussion about is this a prayer that we pray by rote? It's a liturgy. Uh, and in fact, Luke's version supports that because in Luke, it, it says, when you pray, pray like, pray, pray this, say, say this. And then he gives a shorter version. And so there's a dimension that this prayer is actually a liturgy. It's something that we, that we can pray just through line by line. And it's a powerful thing from just praying that way. And many of us would have prayed it that way. In fact, probably many of us would have prayed it as I did at school every day, pretty much, really quickly and without really giving it much thought, sort of mumbling along, you know. The second, uh, but, the, but in this passage, Matthew says, recalls Jesus is saying this. He says, pray like this. So is it a liturgy? Yes, it is. But it's also a model of prayer for all of us to adopt. It's a structure and a framework that Jesus has given us of his own agenda that we can actually pray um, uh, but expand each dimension of that, all right? So we, it's a structure, the way that we, that we pray into that. So we pray with God as our Father. We pray for his kingdom. We pray for our needs. Okay, so God as Father. So the first thing we want to notice as the, in the start of the prayer is that Jesus says, pray our Father in heaven. I love the truth of this, that we have a Father who loves us. Our Father who is, who's created us, doesn't just created us, but he's made us for love. He loves each one of us, us passionately. He sees us. He knows us. He's intimately acquainted with us. He knows exactly what we need. He is our Father. He loves us, not based on the things that we do, but because of his great love for us, expressed to us in Christ Jesus. He is a Father to us. He's the one that loves to supply our needs. He's the one that loves to take care of us. He's the one that has a plan and a purpose for us. He is the one that we're praying to. We're not trying to twist God's arm. We're not trying to make him do something for us because somehow he doesn't like us. So we have to get into his good graces. The good news of the gospel is you and I, by the blood of Jesus, are already and forever in his good graces. And so we come to a father, we come to one who loves us and one who knows us and one that has, has a heart to, 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 to help us in all things. We're coming to a father who is characterized by love, characterized by joy, characterized by peace, characterized by freedom. And he is so lovely and kind. He knows what we need. That's why Jesus says, look, you don't have to twist his arm, which is kind of what he's saying about don't babble like the Gentiles. Don't use repetitive words over and over and over again. He already knows what you need, and he's a good father, and he wants to give you everything that you need, and me, everything that I need. So we come in prayer. The first thing that we come in is in confidence, anchored to the reality that he is love. And he is for us and not against us and wants to give us everything that we need. And so it's a simple thing. The second dimension of that is he's not just my father, as I said earlier, but he's our father. So we actually come to him where he is the head of the family. We come to him as father where, and his son, Jesus, where they are the head of the church. This church 
No, no, God has appointed, you know, for this season, Ash and I to, to be human leaders. But, the, you know, but the reality is this church is not led by us. It's led by God. And that's our hope so. That's our prayer and our desire is that actually he is the head of the church. Globally, he is the head of the church. He is the Lord of all. So it's our father together. No, nobody less important than anyone else because he is our father and we look to him as head of our family together. And then thirdly, he's in heaven, which means he's powerful and able to do more than we could ask or imagine or even dream or think of. You know, we've had a dream this morning, you know, Kathy shared about that, but you know, God's dream, God's, sorry, God's ability to fulfill that dream is more than we could ask or imagine. God actually wants to do more amongst us and in us than we could ask or imagine. And he is God, and we are praying to the Father who has unlimited power and ability to do whatever he likes. So that should give us some confidence in praying. He's infinitely great and powerful. So Jesus says, that's the Father you're praying to. You're not praying to a wimpy God in the sky who may not be able to fulfill your prayer. You're not praying to a, someone who you have to twist his arm to get to. No, he loves you and he wants to fulfill his, his uh, he wants to give you what you need. The second thing that Jesus says after you know, anchoring that prayer into the Father's love is that he anchors that into our need to seek God's glory first. That's what he's praying. He says, the next part of it in verse 9 and then 10, he says, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That phrase, hallowed be your name, what Jesus is saying there is we, that his prayer, our prayer is that, that God would sanctify or set apart or make his name to be made holy, holy amongst us. So that, you know, his name in, in Hebrew, the name actually means, is sort of symbolic of all that God represents and all that God stands for. And so we're praying, hallowed, made, make holy, set apart your name, everything that you stand for in our lives, in our community's lives, and in, the, in our broader, you know, uh, neighborhoods and businesses and workplaces and, you know, na you know nation, city and nation. That our desire is that God's name, all that he is, would be held in honor and be revered and be seen by our nation. That's what it means to say, hallowed be your name. That God would be recognized as holy and that people, not just well, that we first, but then those around us, would have a proper understanding and a reverence for who God is. So we see him as father. The next desire is that he would be magnified and would be glorified and be seen just about just like he is in our society. Right? That's what we're believing for. That's what we're asking God for, that his name would be made holy and that people would see him for who he is. So how's he going to achieve that? Well, he's going to achieve that by Jesus as he came, which was to spring the kingdom of God. So the next part of the prayer is, Kingdom come, will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're focusing upward. We're focusing on God. You have the solution. Would you bring your kingdom? And the kingdom is really God's rule and his reign. So where God is, there's joy, there's peace, there's freedom, there's uh, purity, there's holiness. The kingdom of God is that which is in heaven breaking in, that which is God himself, his nature and his character being established amongst us. And so there's two dimensions to that in the scriptures. The first dimension is the Bible says it was a Jewish hope and it's now become our hope that uh, at some point in the future, God will move in such a way that all the kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of, of God and they will be under his lordship and his rulership and everything that's evil and wrong with the world will get swept away and dealt with and the earth the, the will be recreated in a new heaven that is a new earth and we will be with him dwelling with God forever where there's no sickness, no tears, no sin, no, no disease, no, no addictions. There's nothing wrong with anything in our our world. And that's our hope. So when we pray, kingdom of God, come, what we're praying is to the spirit and the bride say, come, Lord Jesus. We want that moment. We look forward. We long for that moment where everything that's wrong with our world and with us as individuals gets completely transformed in the power of God. But the reality is that Jesus 
when he died and then took our sin and then was buried and then was resurrected and then ascended up to heaven and sent the Holy Spirit, that which was reserved for the future has now broken into the present by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so the Spirit, when we pray the kingdom of God, we're not just praying for that moment in the future when God returns and everything gets changed, but we're praying for that, that which is there now invading the earth here in this moment and the kingdom of God, the love, the joy, the peace, the purity, the freedom of God would break into our society and break into our families and break into our lives and break into our city and that, that God would move powerfully. Well, so we're praying your kingdom come, your will be done. What we're saying is, Lord, would you take over? We're not looking to Christianize our nation. What we're looking for is the God of heaven who is love and joy and peace and freedom to break into us, to, break, to, 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 to pour out his kingdom upon us, his spirit in us, for us to do his will, but then for that to transfer from one person to another person to another person to another person, that his kingdom is established in this society. What would it look like with the kingdom breaking in as people get saved and transformed that we no longer have uh, any addiction or crime or sickness or disease or um, prostitution or uh, you know, identity questions or hatred and racism and bigotry and all of those things that mar our society, the kingdom of God breaking in to transform people's lives, the ultimate goal is that our culture and our society would be transformed. Jesus came to do that. Jesus came to actually push back the forces of the enemy. So when we pray, kingdom of God, come now, will of God be done, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. What we're saying is, Lord, would you push back the forces of, the evil, of evil in our culture, in our arts and entertainment and business and government and family and media and, 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 and religious, you know, in all those spheres of society, we're saying, God, do what you do and push back those forces of, of evil so that we can see the love and the joy and the peace and the freedom of God come. The kingdom of God where people are reconciled to him and they don't have to live in bondage and slavery to, what's, you know, to the culture and just you know, the, 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 the thinking of the world, but they live in freedom. That's what we're praying for. That's what we're believing for. We're believing for God to move in power and for his, for his kingdom to come for his love to move upon us. And as we pray that prayer, your kingdom come, kingdom of God come, it's almost like a, a command, that's what we're looking for, that's what Jesus came to bring, that's what the Holy Spirit establishes. We're actually asking for more of the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit to expand on the inside of us and to, to flow through us to other people, that the worth and the value of Jesus would get transferred from one person to another and would go viral and our society would be changed. But it starts with us, yeah. It starts with us that the kingdom of God, we're praying for that kingdom is first in us, the power of the spirit within us to set us free from anger, to set us free from lust, to set us free from hatred, to set us free from um, you know, impatience and all the things that, are, you know, that we struggle with. We want the kingdom by the power of the spirit to break in and set us free. And the Holy Spirit, not just to set us free, the Holy Spirit has been given to us as the agent of the kingdom to actually enable us to live righteous and holy and pure and powerful lives. So this next weekend, Friday night and Saturday, we've got our transformation weekend. We do four a year, um, four cycles, four different ones you can attend. This one's on the Holy Spirit. It starts Friday night, 7 p.m., runs through Saturday and for, for adults, and, and the, really the weekend is about the kingdom of God breaking in by the power of the Holy Spirit. If you want to know more of who the Holy Spirit is, if you want to manifest more of the fruit of the Spirit in your life, if you want to know and operate in increasing measure in the gifts of the Spirit, this weekend is for you, because we know that the kingdom coming in by the power of the Spirit will be transformative for you and then for the people that are around you. For me and then the people that are around me. 
And so this weekend, this is actually the last day to register. If you wanted to sign up for the, um, the transformation weekend this Friday, I want to really encourage you, if you're hungry for more, come and experience more. But also, if you have children that are between the ages of 7 and 12, there is a, a kids' transformation weekend as well. So that's exciting for us. They're going to be um, running through what it means to live in the kingdom and what life is like and receiving and encountering the Holy Spirit together. So if you have kids between 11 and, uh, sorry, 7 and 12, need to register today. You might find that tomorrow it's closed and you won't be able to come. That will be sad. The other part, as we're praying, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We're asking for the realm of heaven where there is no sickness and no disease and no sin and there's freedom to now impact and break forth on this earth so that we operate in more of the fruit and the gifts of the Spirit so that we see healing and deliverance and miracles and prophetic words and you know, words of knowledge and all of those things. But as we're praying that and we're aligning our hearts with heaven's purpose, we're actually going one step further as we pray that and we're saying, here I am, send me. Because when we're praying, your will be done, God acts sovereignly, but he also acts through us. And so part of our prayer is to say, here I am, Lord, move through me. I want you to, you know, I'm, I'm here to do your will as Jesus did. So it moves from being a father to seeking first the kingdom to then this final section of what it means to live life in the kingdom and to live a life of dependency. So he moves into some petitions. Give us this day our daily bread, or some translations will say bread for tomorrow. Basically what it means is Jesus is saying, give us day bread for this coming day. In other words, what we need for the next 24 hours, what we need to do what we need to do in this day, but no longer because he wants us to remain dependent upon him. You know, God is keen and desirous. He desires to meet our needs. Jesus, in a little bit later in Matthew 6, he's going to talk about not worrying. When we seek first the kingdom of God, God will give us everything else. And so this prayer is give us our bread for today. It shifts our focus to what we need for life, bread for the coming day. The second thing that he says is forgive us our sins. We're to pray because he recognizes that we actually all still fall short and need his forgiveness and his cleansing. But that comes with a condition, which is the grace that we've received, where we're receiving and we're stepping into his forgiveness. That very grace is actually grace that he wants to be a door to enable us to forgive other people as well. Because we live in community and we're called to be a family and a people together, God's desire is that we forgive others as well as we receive his forgiveness, that his grace for us extends to the grace for others. Life in the kingdom looks like having your needs met. Life in the kingdom looks like walking in love and purity and forgiveness for each other. And then life in the kingdom looks like this. He says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. What's he saying? He's saying, don't let us go into trials and difficulties and crumble in those places. Don't let us fall and, and you know, come under pressure. Don't lead us into somewhere where we can't endure. In fact, a couple of scriptures that sort of jump to mind. One is in James 3, where James says that God won't give you more than, um, sorry, he won't lead you into temptation. As you're, tempt you're tempted when it's your own flesh that comes out and you, and you respond. But there is a moment where there's things in our lives where we walk through difficulties and challenges. And 1 Corinthians, I think, chapter 10, Paul says, you know, God isn't going to lead you into more than you can handle. And this is what he's praying here. Lord, lead us not into temptation. In fact, Jesus himself was led into temptation by the Spirit to overcome the devil so that we could be walking free. So lead us not into temptation. And then he says, uh, and uh, deliver us from evil or deliver us from the evil one. In other words, we need your protection. We need your freedom. We don't want to crumble under the pressure of, of life. And we don't want to crumble under the things that are coming against us. Neither do we want the enemy to have his hooks and his tentacles in us. Deliver us from evil, the evil that's the sin that's on the inside. Deliver us from evil that's around us. Deliver us from the enemy trying to have his way with us. The good news is because we're in the kingdom of God and we're seated with Christ in the heavenly places, the enemy doesn't have any foothold upon us at all. 
The only foothold he has upon us is that which we allow him to have through our own, you know, our own sin in our lives. And so the prayer of lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil is, Jesus, is really saying, God, deal with all the issues of my life. Every, any open door, would you close that so that I would be free from the, any hook that the devil has upon me so that I can live in the truth and the freedom and the purity of your kingdom and of who you've called me to be. Life in the kingdom looks like having a father who loves us. It looks like seeking his presence and his glory first. It looks like then from that place, as he moves by the power of the Spirit within us, to actually having our needs met, our sins forgiven, and freedom and deliverance from the enemy. 1 John 3, I think, Jesus said, or John says about Jesus, you know, the reason that he came was to destroy, actually that word means to untie us from the work of the enemy. Aren't you glad that for a Savior who has gone into the garden of Gethsemane and said, not my will, but yours be done. Who's allowed the temptation of the enemy to come upon him, who by the power of the Spirit has overcome that temptation, not just overcome the temptation, but forever in his death and his burial and his resurrection, forever rescued us from the power of the enemy and untied us from that so that we can live in the kingdom and the glorious kingdom of his love. And so the Last part of the prayer that we would pray is not, not from the Bible, but from a, a book called the Didache, Didache or something like that uh, from the first century from the apostles. And it was, you know, yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's to anchor us back into the reality that we, have a, we are part of a kingdom that can never fail. That, and a kingdom that is always going to be advancing. A kingdom that is never going to retreat, but is always going to push forward and have, God's going to have his way in our city, in our nation. Our prayer, our belief as we're stepping into this year and into this year of prayer, this week of prayer, and just in general, is that the kingdom of God would come so beautifully and so magnificently that all the issues of our city would be transformed, that the city of God would literally come down out of heaven into the city of Toronto, and the city of Toronto would fulfill its calling and purpose in God. So I want to invite you to stand, if you would, please. We're going to pray this together. As we anchor ourselves into, and remind ourselves it's the Father's love, we're going to, and we're seeking first his kingdom, and then we're going to be dependent upon him. I'd like to do two things. Firstly, I would like just to pray through the prayer together. And so we're going to put it back up on the screen, hopefully, and we'll just pray, literally pray through the scripture. The second thing I want to do is I want to pray, and I want you to pray with me and agree whatever way you want to, and we'll just pray using this as a template, okay? So we'll just repeat this all together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Father, I thank you for your incredible love for us. I thank you that you brought us into your family, that you are our Father who loves us. You're our Father who knows everything about us and you know everything that we need. I thank you that we live in your smile. We live as your happy thought. We live in the affections of you. And so, Lord, and I thank you that you are, you've put us in family together as a community. So together, as a family, we stand before you. I thank you that you're the God who is in heaven. You've reconciled heaven to earth. You've now put yourself within us by the Spirit. But you are also in heaven, being able to do more than we could ask or imagine or even dare to dream. I thank you, Father, for the glory and the bigness of who you are. And so, Lord, we pray that you would make your name holy in this nation that you would make known, you would make your name holy in our lives, in our families, Lord, in our neighborhoods, in our businesses, in our workplaces, in our government, in our institutions, that your name would be glorified, that you would be seen as holy upon the earth, that the truth of who you are would be grasped by those who don't know you or who maybe are there in other religions or stuck in their own sin, and they would come into the glory of who you are. And so, Father, we're asking you that you would release your kingdom. We're declaring kingdom of God 
God, come. Will of heavenly daddy be done here on the earth. Let it be on earth right now as it is in heaven. So Father, we're asking for the kingdom to break forth in this city. Lord, we're asking for the rule and the reign, the joy and the freedom and the peace and the love and the reconciliation and the justice of Jesus and the righteousness of Jesus to be established in this city, that we would be a city that's founded upon you. Lord, we're asking you to break in to every part of our culture, Lord, and push back in the forces of the enemy, Lord, in our media and our entertainment and our arts and our families and our government and our businesses and churches, Lord, and, and all the dimensions of our society, Lord. We're asking that you would push that back by the power of the Spirit, Lord. We're asking for your glory to fall upon us. We're asking for the Spirit of God to come. We're asking for, for, you, for the more of heaven to come upon us, Lord. Fill us afresh, Holy Spirit. Fill us afresh with your life. And Lord, I'm asking you for your will to be done. Lord, we're asking that what you desire would be accomplished and achieved in us and through us, through the institutions of this nation. Lord, even through the enemy, Lord, you fulfill your purpose. And so let your will be done. Lord, and we're asking for the kingdom, the heaven to invade earth right now. So Lord, we're asking for an increase in miracles. We're asking for an increase in signs and wonders. We're asking for an increase in healing. We're asking for an increase in prophecy and words of knowledge and words of wisdom. Lord, we're asking for an increase of your love. Lord, we're asking for an increase of your glory upon us, the manifest weight of your presence upon us here. Lord, we're asking for that in Jesus' mighty name. And Father, we're asking that you would give us bread, that you would give us everything that we need for today. Lord, for, as individuals and as a church family, Lord, as connect groups and leaders, Lord, give us what we need for today, both in terms of physical this, um, bread, but also the bread of life and the joy and the power of the Spirit. Father, we're asking you that you would provide our every need. Father, we're also asking you that you would forgive us for every trespass and every sin. Lord, that you would break in where there's difficulty and pain. Father, we're asking that you would release your love upon us, that we would be a community of love where we are uh, able to forgive and release forgiveness to other people and walk in your purity, even to our enemies. Father, we're asking for that. And finally, Lord, we're asking that you would lead us not into temptation. You would give us power to overcome the enemy, Lord, and that you would deliver us from all the sin that's on the inside of us. You would deliver us from the power of the enemy, Lord, that you would sever every hook and every close every door and shut every attachment, sever every attachment, that we would walk in purity and holiness and freedom and joy in you, Lord, that there would be nothing that you, that, that you would want to accomplish through us that would be thwarted by the power of the enemy. We remind ourselves that we are seated with you in the heavenly places and we say, kingdom of God, as we stand in this place, as we're seated with you, let your glory come upon us. And we declare that yours is the kingdom and yours is the power and yours is the glory. You're the righteous and the beautiful and the glorious and the holy one. You're the one that we worship and we love you and we honor you. In Jesus' name, we all pray. Amen. Yes. Thank you so much, Murray. Do not feel full, you know? I love that we're moving from that mumbly prayer that we learned by rote into something that has power and authority. And I want to encourage you this week, take that prayer every day and see if you can stretch out the, the, the intent and the words. Use it as your model to, to pray, especially those of us who do not have the gift of words like that, that it's good, it's a good exercise for us to stretch. Can we pray this prayer? I'm excited to hear Ash next week. She's going to be obliterating our good, polite training that it is impolite to ask. And I'm very excited for that. So uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Don't forget, sign up for the Transformation Weekend. Going to enjoy it so much. Back there in the um, Connection Center, they can help you out if you want to know how to sign up for it. If you're not in a Connect group, that is your place to be as well. The Connect groups are the heartbeat of this church where we gather together in smaller groups and get to know each other and be known. You can do that there as well. So happy Sunday. See you next week. And, of course, if you would like prayer, the prayer team will be up here, and you can come for any kind of prayer that you would like to come for. Prayer team, you are welcome. Friends, thank you so much for being with us today for our online church. We are so glad that you are with us. My prayer is that you've had a good experience of meeting God 
I'm hoping maybe you even cried a little bit. I'm hoping that you felt the presence of God when the prayers were given for you. So we wanna bless you today. And just a reminder, friends, one of the best things you can do for us and for you is to press that like button, uh, to press that share button, and just post this on your social media so that your friends see what you're enjoying and we sort of get the word out. And I wanna encourage you again that if you uh, feel that you wanna be a part of what we're doing at Catch the Fire, three things that you can do, be attending regularly, be serving, all those opportunities you'll see on our website and being a part of our financial contributors. So thank you so much. God bless you. Have an amazing day.